esoteric subjects, including magic and rituals and festivals uh, and the nature of consciousness, really. Um, today, you'll be giving us some insights about your research about the future of psychedelics uh, and the relevance of these substances in society. Thank you. Hello. So I move. And I would like you to interact. Some more people are coming, otherwise close the door. Yeah? This is about the future of psychedelics. Now all of you are exploring that future. Except the scientists. Because the scientists are now exploring what we explored in the 60s. And there's a picture of me with John Perry Barlow and Leary and myself, very young, writing a book about virtual reality. Even then we thought about what can you do with drugs in a wider context. We were believing virtual reality would be an electronic drug. It's actually happening now, it's used for psychotherapy. We were thinking beyond just using it to, to treat addiction, PTSD and stuff like that. And even today when I go to conferences, the only thing I hear is people talking about what we, in Dutch, I don't know, in English, what we call diagnose treatment combinations. And I'm going to be very critical. I hear people aiming at a $4,000 diagnose treatment combination done by professional psychologists, and that's the new business for psychologists and psychiatrists. With a price, and big pharma behind it, and a setting, and everything like that. That's not what I and those millions of people out there use psychedelics for. I do therapy, but I also wrote a book about uh, festivals. Every weekend, three to four to five million British youngsters take a pill. Is their use considered by science? No. So, the future of psychedelics. It's in you. Who has not experimented with sex and psychedelics? Will all the impotent people say, ah, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, most people have. Yeah, because when you take psychedelics, that's something that happens. And I just spoke to uh, uh, Felix Ruckert, and he does uh, bondage and all kind of weird things. And they use psychedelics, and they try to find out more about themselves and about the process of bondage and SM and all that weird stuff which helps people who have problems there. So, is that an approved use? No, it isn't. Should it be? Yes. I'm, I'm mentioning art. I'm mentioning uh, group mind. Very important, you know. We know very little. We know a little bit about mass psychology and, and uh, some experiments like uh, the, what was it, the Stanford Prison Experiment. But we know very little about the group mind. Except, at the moment, the most popular use of psychedelics in some circles is ayahuasca. Where group mind is really at stake. No, we only research individuals. We don't look at what happens in the group. It's not easy, but it's there. And many people go to ayahuasca rituals or other rituals, or they go to a festival, which is a ritual, and use drugs. We should look into that. Transformation, I'll come back to that. Everybody wants innovation, transformation, change. Can we use psychedelics to achieve that? Not only in a psychotherapeutic session with a single individual, but with groups, in business settings, in brain uh, brainstorming. Those things. Can we use the same stuff for more and more interesting stuff? Can we do bio danza, you know, dancing events? Can we do massage with psychedelics? That's where we should look at. Can we learn better? We know by now that learning is not only in the mind, it's also in the body. So if you want to read a book, it's better than reading a smartphone. Because you have to do something with your body. So can we use psychedelics to enhance the learning experience? I'm not saying we should give it to 12 year olds, but there was the illusion mystery where people maybe, I don't know what age, 18, 20, 22, had an initiation. And it was not only taking the drug, it was 
walking, seeing theater, we know all the stories that walk from Athens to Eleusis and so on. Okay. Decision making. I have a choice to make. And I believe personally that psychedelics help you to transcend the borders of time and space. So, if I take a drug, get into my inner child, and my, my, my core soul, would it help me to see the future? Now, maybe you think it's not true, but the old Soma rituals were all about that. How can you see the future? Now, can we use that in modern science or in modern situations? I think we should, but nobody talks about it. Could we use not only psychedelics, but psychedelics in combination with electronic equipment? Mr. Kahata there will show you today his, his design for a brainwave ana analyzer, so you can see how your brain works. Yeah? Uh, this afternoon or tomorrow? Kahata? Yes? Today. He's there, but he, he'll show you some of the things. We work with virtual reality. Don't believe virtual reality in the 90s, and I, was, I wrote the first book in the world about virtual reality. Really, it was all about drugs. It was all about sex in the back room. Virtual reality in the early 90s was drugs, sex, and rock and roll, with people like Leary. And now we take it serious, yes? Immersion, biofeedback, games, stuff like that. Let's think ahead. Would I suggest that the European Union makes an elusive kind of mystery initiation for incoming Syrians. Yeah, <laughs> maybe a weird idea, but think about it. We want grown-up people. We used to send them to the military. We sent them to war. It used to be initiation at many levels, in many cultures. Do we do that today? No. So why not? create an elusive kind of mystery school at some age, 18, 19, 20. We now go to festivals, you could see that, you go to Fusion, you go to Boom, you get stoned. But we know that the situation, the set and setting is not always optimal. We could do better. Okay. Just another thought. Self-driving cars. They're supposed to be here, they're supposed to come there. You know, a whole new set of business opportunities will evolve. Brothels in cars, but why not tripping in cars? Yeah. Yeah. You're tripping anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Board meetings, brainstorming. Well, the lesson is, can we expand the use of psychedelics? And we don't have to go too far because each of you has done these experiments. You know, you've taken the drug and you said, oh, let's see when I, when I go swimming, when I have sex, when I stand on my head or not. When I eat this or that or what, we, we all experiment. And we find interesting uses. We find interesting situations. We know now that a fire and psychedelics go well together. It's a great combination. Yeah? Is that what is in this diagnosis treatment approach? I don't think they have a fire, maybe we can. Okay. What will we see? We see many, many, many new drugs. A few years ago I got interested in CAT and now they're cations, which are artificial, like cannabinoids, a little bit uh, altered uh, drugs. I used to, to visit and work with uh, Richugin. He was doing that, you know, add an OH here or whatever. Yeah? New drugs all the time. Of course the law is there, we will see legalization at some level. We will see more combinations of therapies and drugs. I'm terribly afraid of uh, an MRE scan. You know, me, you go through the machine. Would it help to give someone, maybe not LSD, but MDMA or whatever, in childbirth? Most, most cultures have a specific drug to help in childbirth. Uh, I never, Ina May Gaskin is a, they work in, uh, what do you call, uh, Hebamme, yeah? Uh, and she uses cannabis to help the process. Less need for other morphine or, or injections or whatever, yes? I've asked MOPS and other organizations, will you please research the use of psychedelics in childbirth? Yes, to help the process. Nobody is interested, there's no money. Because it's a big business. If you go to a hospital and have a baby, it's a big business. We're not going to change that. 
more matching of personality and drugs. <coughs> I write books about personality. I'm really concerned with the fact that we, most of us have multiple personalities. Not on the level that it's really dangerous, but we have more masks, more things. How do we work with it? When I hear Professor Griffith of uh, Hop John Hopkins talk about 560 uh, patients going taken to in an experiment, I want to know what is their personality. We can use the Enneagram, we can use Myers-Briggs, whatever, but I want to see how personality relate to a specific drug. And I'll show you some pictures there later. How do we deal with accessing the other world? We have to understand that most psychedelic use in the past was about telling the future, making war, going to hunt something, uh, do evil, do good, whatever. No, I don't think in the old uh, days of the, of the Vedic rituals with Soma, they talked about therapeutic use. They just wanted more cows or more whatever, more elephants. Yeah, that's a magical side, trying to influence the other world so that it comes back. Oh, hi Peter. <laughs> what it comes down to, we have to understand what thinking is. And psychedelics are real good stuff to learn about what psychedelics, how, how, what consciousness is. Yeah, that's where we should use that. People do many brain scans and you see that, but what NUT does in England, giving people psychedelics and then looking at the brain scans. That's where we should go. And new theories, and I just want to mention one, is thinking an epigenetic DNA process. The brain not being the computer, the brain being the tumor. Yeah, many people think there's a cascade records out there, but that's the idea. Good. We have to look into this shit. We really have to look how this stuff works, not by many stories and many books. I was at a conference in England and I, I counted about 150 books of people going to Peru and doing ayahuasca and seeing God and stuff like that. All the same story. You've seen those books, yes? Is it interesting? No, it's anecdotal. We need models, we need understanding. Yes, what I say. We need to know the personality the, uh, profiles before you know something. You can, you can say, oh, this guy is uh, borderline. That's not enough. I want to know much more to see what the effect is. And here I say diagnose treatment combination. I hate that. All these guys are shaping the business of the future. These psychologists, these psychiatrists who were put out of work because their, their processes, their old Freudian processes take too long. They want a new gig. 4,000 euro. Wow, wow. Go there. You're sick. You get the diagnosis. You get the treatment. It's going to be like a stranglehold for real future use. Okay, I'm going to give you a few basic notions. You can use, and excuse me, the, oh, it doesn't look too bad. The, the computer has a little frame there. Any tool can be used in two ways. To break the mask or to fortify the mask. This goes for, for, for therapy, this goes for festivals, this goes for films, it goes for books, and it goes for therapy. Psychedelic therapy can be used to break ourselves, our, our masks, or it can be used to just go dancing. Ah, yeah, yeah. Implication. Everybody has two drugs of choice. One that you like because it brings you in the same state you're always in, and you dance and you do, and the other one is that breaks your mask. It teaches you something about yourself. So I help people decide what are your drugs of choice. Yeah? And hey, look at that. Not all drugs work at the same level. We know that, don't we? But nobody, this is really a very simple picture of chakras, yeah? You know about chakras? So every drug is different. And it's not that the LSD is not doing sex or, or that Iboga is only doing the first chakra early memories, but this is like general. And if you have a patient and I want to know where their blockages are, where the problem is, and if the problem is in the heart, I give them ecstasy. If the problem is maybe in early childhood or, or even what you say, the prior lifestyle, maybe I would suggest Iboga. So the same drug for all people and all circumstances is not the right idea. Yeah, you have to make stuff. Has this been researched? No. 
Can we research it? Yes. Okay. Uh, ah, this is the interesting thing about transformation. Lots of my work are about transformation. Innovation. I made my money in the computer industry, writing books. Uh, by the way, some of my books are there. You can all download. In principle, you were given a little piece of paper there. You can download all my books for free. Yeah. If not, if wow. people that just came in, it's there. Thank yeah. You. Thank but you. Really? Thank you. I want it to be read. I want it to be read. You know, I put my books on academia.edu and. Uh, I used words like festivalization and psychedelics, and guess what? I, I got onto the top 2% of academia.edu, 34 million people, just using the right words. Not because my books are so good, but I just put them there for free. And yes, I'm getting invitations for things like this and so on. So, don't worry. Free books are good books. <laughs> what do we need? Transformation. We need a temporary autonomous zone. People that have been to Boom know it. It's a word from Haki Bay. Yeah, uh, it's a temporary autonomous zone, which means a sacred space where you can feel free, you can do things. Yes, if the police is there, no, no safe space. Okay, what happens then? You want to involve the heart, the mind, and the body, all three of them. Yeah, if you just sit there like, oh, we're going to think, or if you just, uh, just feel, no, move, think, act, dance, interact, yes, participation. If you go to a festival, the people that are participating in this and are helping to set up the stuff get more out of it than the people just sitting. We know that. Realization in the mind. Identification. Oh, I'm a boomer. Do you know this word? People that go to, to Burning Man, they, uh, whatever, or, or boom, they say, I'm a boomer or I'm a burner. Yeah? Identification. Giving up your own personality for a higher goal. By the way, the Nazis understood it very well. If you give up your inferiority complex for a superiority environment, you can uh, get fascism. Right. Yeah. Good. Resonance. Resonance, it's important. And I'll show you this thing. Resonance, it's positive and negative. Please understand, if you want innovation, you don't only want the positive stuff. You don't want more money to science. You don't want better conditions, living conditions, pampering people. You want people also to suffer because most interesting innovation comes from a negative resonance I hate you I'm gonna be better than you yet yeah, do something yes uh, Einstein is a good example he had a lousy job and then he started writing his theories yeah so negative resonance is a subject that should be mentioned in the context of transformation change whatever yeah it's not too bad to to Get some irritation at some level. Good. This is, a, this is a lie that all of you should have. If you have patience, you should have this around. If you have someone who has never, never taken anything. You, you, this is a very simple timeline of a trip. Yeah, it's a real simple picture. And you can all copy it and, and send it around, but show it to people. So they understand what is going to happen. What are the side effects? How long it will take? Will there be an energy drain? The Tuesday dip in the MDMA session. Yeah? But I've never seen it. I mean, it's my, it's my thing, and I, I've shown it in many conferences, and people say, wow! <coughs> but anybody could make it. It's very, very simple, just the time. You can make that more, I would just say that, uh, more specific, yeah? <coughs> You'll probably recognize it, and it, go, it goes for most trips. Of course, the intensity, which is the vertical axis, is different. With LSD, you might have visuals. With MDMA, you might just have opening of the heart. That's the story. Okay. I think we have to look really into how the psyche works. And the models I've seen, I don't like. I'll just go very quickly. I believe that, for me, the line that matters most is, I look at myself in the mirror. I, what it is, the soul, the whatever, looks at myself. The self is a, is a line. It's a dimension. What is on that dimension? Ah, look at that. We have things like the ego, which most people would call assumed self. But I make a division between the assumed self and the shown self. 
because what you show to the world might be totally different from what you really think you are. I mean, I'm really, I'm a serial killer, you know what I mean? But I'm not going to show you that. Yeah? So, these three things, which has brought me to write books about therapy and uh, basically saying that lots of therapy is just fixing and not healing. But, listen, what? This is it. My time is up and it's time for questions. Yes, was that the story? <laughs> yeah? There's much more, but... Uh... Okay. Question. I would like to say a great thank you. It's a great vision, a great vision. I would yes. like to say a great thank you. Oh, oh well, yeah, yeah, fine. That's not a question, it's a remark. Again, my books are free and my theories are really weird. This is just a joke. Yes? But this one, this one is not a joke. I've been refused at conferences about evolution because it's too, sorry, because it's too weird. But the DNA, the, uh, the learning capability of apes and what as well. I mean, I can prove this, but nobody wants it because I'm kicking Mr. Darwin in the butt and not a little bit, yeah? And I'm not an evolutionary scientist. I just noticed it, that this doesn't make sense that monkeys should lead to us. Monkeys come from us. They're just degenerated humans. But okay, <laughs> much there. I like questions, come on. <laughs> yeah. I have a general question. You just skip forward some slides there. Is there a general opportunity to get those slides? Uh, yes, slides? yes, yes. Because Download the book and all the, all, the, all, the, all the things are there. On my website you'll find uh, this PPT. Okay. No problem. Can. Thank you so much. Why? Come on, come on. Here we go. Yes. Um, you spoke about the ten temporary autonomous zones. Um, it's funny because on the weekend I had a long talk about this. I think it's a book. About no, no. Uh, it's a concept by Hakim Bay. Yeah. Peter Lemon Wilson and I, I interviewed him at one time and he's a Sufi guy. And he came up with this concept, which he made fairly small, but I think it's a great concept. Yes, but it, the, uh, from my understanding of, of the talk, a lot of hours about this, it seems like this is like in an area where uh, the use of those substances is illegal, this is the only way to, uh, to bring this into society. Through but to, if you want to change yourself, or society, or a group, or the world, find a safe way to do it, a safe place, which could be in your head, but exactly. could also be physical. I mean, this is a safe place. I mean, we, the police is in there, and I don't, yeah. and so on. Exactly. So, um, so you, th you also think that those people should more try to create temporary autonomous zones in there? I think right. I'm beginning. My sons make computer games, and I'm beginning to realize that what they make is temporary autonomous zones where people can experiment. And in this world, it's very hard to experiment because your Facebook pictures and whatever, they're all seen by the police and all the people around you. So to have a temporary autonomous zone in a game is very important. I, I see this phenomenon everywhere, anyway. Yeah, so um, I came in a little later. Um, so I don't know if this was internet, but um, I wondered, like when I heard about the future of uh, psychedelics, um, or the future of substance use, I, I wondered whether maybe um, designer drugs and research chemicals we might encounter going forward will all kind of fit into either psychedelics, deliria, or dissociatives, or whether we might actually be able to find other substances that trigger certain... I worked a lot with Shubin. You know who Shubin was? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Sasha and his wife. And I went there and he would always get something from his secret thing. I've had drugs from him that make me see the future, uh, especially when I was in a plane at 10,000 feet or something. Clear hearing, yes? Enormous erections, stuff like that, yes? Yeah, the, the things happen. He had lots of stuff. So there is more to be found and will be found. Yeah? And, and, and even for things, I don't know, 
maybe do yoga better or yeah that's what I hope that we use these substances for new purposes yeah a person who cannot do yoga because you know, I don't know yeah? and then suddenly if you give people with Alzheimer or a Parkinson a little pill man for three hours they can do it I myself I'm, I have a rheumatism and if I take LSD when I'm in, in my wheelchair I'm in my wheelchair sometimes I can walk for three hours is that a registered use of LSD? No. Does it work? Yes. Do I take LSD then all the time? No, because I have to find out why I have the rheumatism. It is an emotional question. Yep. Do you give practical causes of practical training? Do I give practical causes of training to just like books? Do I give practical? Yeah, we do workshops, and uh, my friend there, uh, yes, she does therapy, and uh, but I'm really a writer, so I only do groups. Yeah. And therapy to find out what what it is. We, I, I, I treat cancer patients, whatever, not to, to treat them, but because it's so interesting to see how those processes work. Yeah, and I'm really believing the mind causes the body to do things. And then I write books for you. <laughs> what question are we? I think uh, one more. Question. One more question. Yeah, I think uh, Timothy Lee said uh, that computer, computers would be more like drugs, so can you tell us how far that has gotten? Is it possible? That was our hope with, with virtual reality. Yeah. So People like Leary got interested in computers, but they thought they were mind-changing things. And if we combine the computers with the biofeedback, like Ada is doing, and with, with scans and whatever, we can learn a lot more. Okay. Yeah, so, but virtual reality in the, in the 90s, and I, you know, we thought, ah, this is going to be it. This is going to change the world. And then it died because kids got uh, epileptic uh, fits, and then in 93 the thing died, and now it's coming up again. Okay, so again, all my books, I've, the paper here, are on, on uh, my website, and uh, you're free to download, spread it, do it. Weird ideas. Okay, thank you. Cool.